Welcome back. Um, Ms. Hurtado, are we set? Uh, welcome back, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's quite all right. It's the vagaries of technology. Yes. Yes. Shall I begin again with the entire vote? Um, well, I think we just need Mr. Thompson's vote. Um, yes. For the, for the minutes, um, for the minutes, it might be easier for the minute takers if we, if we start over. Shall I, shall I do the, well, actually, let me, let me pause and say, Mr. Bruder, what should we do? Our vote was interrupted. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, my preference would be to, uh, uh, to do, uh, I think we have three on the record. Uh, I think if we could get uh, Mr. Thompson's vote and then uh, your vote again, uh, I, think, I think we'll be good. All right, thanks. I do want to officially declare that we are back from recess. Um, we are uh, working on agenda item number six, the rulemaking process of the committee, and we are currently voting on um, an action item. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Hurtado uh, was uh, working through the roll call vote, and I believe was on Mr. Thompson. Yes, Mr. Thompson, your vote, please. This is on the allocation of the items to the new CPRA rule subcommittee? Yeah, yes. I heard the formulation of that and I vote aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. And there are five yeses and zero noes. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado, um, and to the board. Uh, the motion uh, carries. It has been approved by a vote of five to zero. And I will now move on to the second action item. Uh, may I have a motion to assign uh, the topics uh, listed in the rulemaking process subcommittee slides for the board meeting on November 15, 2021 to the update CCPA rules subcommittee for further work if and as needed, including the definition of dark patterns, the definition of de-identified, the definition of unique identifier, methods for submitting requests, categories of personal information, categories of sensitive personal information, exceptions as necessary to comply with state or federal law, the definition of intentionally interacts, the definition of precise geolocation and record keeping requirements other than those that apply to cybersecurity audits, risk assessments, and automated decision-making. I move. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Lay. I have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Yes. Uh, Ms. De La Torre? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. There are five yes votes and zero no votes. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. The motion carries with a vote of five to zero. Um, thank you to the board. And I will move on to the third action item. May I have a motion to assign to the rulemaking process subcommittee for further work, if and as needed, the items listed on the rulemaking process subcommittee slides for the board meeting for November 15th, 2021, including coordinating a report on how the California Consumer Privacy Act of 2018, as amended by the California Privacy Rights Act of 2020, relates to existing insurance code provisions and regulations relating to consumer privacy. I move. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Ms. De La Torre? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. 
There are five yes votes and zero no votes. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. The motion carries with a vote of five to zero. I believe this completes the action items that we have for the process, the rulemaking process subcommittee. Am I correct? That's correct. Thank you, um, Ms. De La Torre, um, and thank you to the rulemaking process subcommittee again for this careful thought and to the board um, for a robust discussion. With that, um, we can move to agenda item number seven, um, delegation of authority, um, uh, which is a discussion of the executive director's delegation of authority. I'll give some background, provide a recommendation, and then invite discussion. As a reminder, uh, section 1798.199.35 of the uh, uh, CCPA states that the agency board may delegate authority to the chairperson or the executive director to act in the name of the agency between meetings of the agency, except with respect to resolution of enforcement actions and rulemaking authority. And then separately, section 1798.199.40F um, also directs the board to appoint a chief privacy auditor. In our October 18th, 2021 meeting, uh, the board voted to delegate authority to, for day-to-day -day operations to the executive director, with the exception of hiring the chief privacy auditor. Um, the board also agreed to place this delegation of authority on, uh, excuse me, the delegation of authority on this agenda um, for discussion. Uh, in discussion on October 18th, board members um, all were generally supportive of the delegation and wanted the executive director to have the ability to make day-to-day -day decisions. However, board members did have multiple, multiple viewpoints as to how the delegation should apply to hiring specifically. The majority uh, board view was that the delegation should extend to all positions other than the chief privacy auditor, which is designated in our implementing um, statute as a position to be appointed by the board. In the majority's view, the delegation strikes the right balance allowing the executive director the ability to build the agency and oversee it on a day-to-day -day basis with some efficiency while retaining to the board the authority identified by voters. Majority members also pointed out that the delegation exists until amended or rescinded, so the board could always reconsider. In minority view, however, um, the board should have further input into some executive positions. Mr. Thompson, in particular, explained that as because we are a new agency, um, certain executive positions will, could really affect how the agency's culture develops. He proposed that the board could um, carve out the general counsel position, or he proposed that the board could seek consensus around a less formal approach. Um, uh, he used the term concurrence, that the executive director should seek concurrence from the board with a final candidate for um, some important positions. Um, it was acknowledged that DISC is a little difficult to define because we don't have a full organizational chart yet, um, but Mr. Thompson suggested the general counsel and head of enforcement or a chief technologist if the latter two positions are developed in the future. Ultimately, as noted, as I noted, the board voted to extend the delegation as drafted and also agreed to discuss the delegation again in this meeting. In the meantime, I've been exploring options and seeking advice on what is possible. Uh, Mr. Thompson's point about the culture of the new agency uh, uh, was very well taken. In consultation with the executive director, the executive director also affirmed that for especially important positions, he prefers not to exercise his authority without some input from the board. Um, however, uh, concurrence in our last meeting wasn't fully defined, um, and as delegations are granted or not, I sought advice about if there was a way to incorporate this um, idea of input into important positions. Uh, in a private company, the executive director could simply seek input from board members individually or in a group or in a subset. Under Bagley Keene, of course, the process is a little bit more complicated. The board can't deliberate or accidentally appear to deliberate, deliberate, excuse me, outside of a properly noticed meeting. For this reason, the executive director can't just seek input from individual board members um, uh, individually. So, however, um, the executive director can seek input via a properly noticed meeting and a closed session discussion. And it would be closed session um, if we're talking about specific candidates for a job. 
Um, so there remains the so there is a possibility of this kind of board input. There remains the question of which positions um, might involve this board input. Uh, we would have to be specific in order to uh, properly create opportunities for input um, within Bagley King. And in the last meeting, both Mr. Thompson and Ms. De La Torre um, mentioned the general counsel position. Um, as I just mentioned, Mr. Thompson mentioned head of enforcement and chief technologist if those positions uh, appear in the future. Um, my feeling is that those functions may well be encompassed in the chief privacy auditor, um, which is separate from the delegation of authority. So I think that those are covered. In my research, I identified also the general counsel position, uh, affirming Mr. Thompson and Ms. De La Torre's thought, and another position we didn't discuss, um, the deputy director of communications as potentially important positions. So after um, research and thought um, and considering the conversation from last time, my recommendation is that the board, and my hope, is that the board find consensus around Mr. Thompson's idea of concurrence in the form of input via properly noticed, noticed closed session discussion for the general counsel and in the future, the deputy director of communications. The chief privacy auditor remains within the board's authority and responsibility to appoint directly. I do realize that I'm asking more of those with the majority view in the last meeting. At the same time, I also think that Mr. Thompson and Ms. Delatore's views regarding culture and board input are important, as does the executive director. I think this is a good way to move forward, allowing for board input without creating too much inefficiency or inadvertently tying the executive director's hands in a way that we don't intend to. If the board agrees with this middle ground, I will work with the executive director to schedule an appropriate meeting um, uh, to discuss and provide input on the general counsel uh, hire. Um, so that is my that is my proposal or my recommendation, um, and I will now open it up um, to board discussion and comment. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Um, one, oh, thank you. I want uh, thank you for taking those views in consideration and and for your thoughtful deliberation and for your leadership in in seeking consensus among the the five of us I, it's appreciated so um I, I thought your description of our previous discussion um your characterization of of the views that i expressed was on point and accurate um and i i think where i think where you're headed makes a lot of sense so um wanted to say thank you for for hearing hearing the the minority view and taking it creation and and leading us to in a path that, that um you know i think merits consideration and hopefully um unanimous approval i don't want to presume what others think but that that would be my my view i think this this is this moves us forward very effectively and thank you for for leading us in this direction thank you mr thompson additional uh miss de la Torre. I also want to echo the words of Mr. Thompson. Thank you for um, thoughtful consideration of our point of view. I look forward to an opportunity to uh, have a um, consensus around um, the um, delegation so that we all can um, vote in favor of it. And I, uh, I, I, um, uh, I think all of the thoughts that were expressed by the chairperson are appropriate. Um, concur seems to be something that um, we can define, and and that's um, perfectly fine from my point of view. Is um, is the idea of providing feedback and effective supervision that was the driving factor in the position that I took in the last meeting, and and so long as we create a process that enables that, I I look forward to. Um, the discussions and, and, and the consensus around that. Thank you, Ms. Delatory. Um, Mr. Thompson. Sorry, I realized I was remiss in not acknowledging, uh, as part of your presentation, I think you said that you had talked to Mr. Sultani about this and that that um, you had consulted with him and that, that he 
agreed that this was a good path forward. I think I was remiss in not acknowledging his, uh, I appreciate his flexibility in this as well. And you know, I think that's a validation of the impression that I've had of him, that he's a, a re very reasonable and thoughtful person. And um, so I didn't want to only thank you, Chairperson Urban, but I wanted to acknowledge that you you had worked with Mr. Soltani on this and, and uh, acknowledge him as well. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, Mr. Lay? Could you clarify again what um, th this this process is, the concurrence process? Yeah, I just want to process it. Um. Yeah. Of course, of course. Um, so we, we wouldn't be changing the delegation of authority. Um, what I worked on was, um, well, I asked about various options, but um, what I'm proposing was a way to, to implement um, what Mr. Thompson was describing as concurrence in the last meeting. Um, and so that would be in our next board meeting, presumably, um, when, when, when um, the process is ready, the general counsel, we would have a closed session um, discussion, giving the board the chance to provide input um, to the executive director. Because of Bagley Keene, we can't provide casual input on a one-on-one -on -one basis because we could accidentally deliberate um, even, or it could appear that we were deliberating. So we would need to actually have a discussion that is properly noticed and the public knew that that's what we were talking about. So that's the, that's the proposal for that position and for the um, deputy director of communications whenever that person comes down the pike. Okay, so just those two positions. Um, this, this is the process for those two positions only? Right, and the chief privacy auditor, as we all recall, is will look more like the executive director process because the board needs to appoint that person directly. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, you know, I think my, my preference would be to, to not have these, um, you know, and, and give the executive director, um, you know, the, the power to make these decisions, but I understand we want to find a middle ground. Um, so I, I think, um, it, you know, as long as, you know, the executive director is okay with this, um, you know, that's, I, I could be persuaded. Thank you, Mr. Lay. And to be clear, we would be giving the executive director input. Um, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be like the chief privacy editor, but we actually need to make the decision and do the work and um, keep the records for HR and all of that. Um, Ms. Sierra? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for your work on this. And, you know, given everyone's comments and your comments and back and you know I had was in the majority view on our last meeting um you know but hearing about you know the limitations that we have um that we cannot provide input individually and that the executive director um because I you know would not think he would would want input um and if this is the best or only way we can do it it makes a lot of sense to me to move forward this way and I think these two positions um, you know, in these limited general counsel who will also be advising us as a board. Um, so I can I can support this and I think it's um, a good path forward. So thank you for your work on this and um, and also to the executive director. I can support this. Thank you, Ms. Hira. Um, further comments or thoughts from the board? Yes, Mr. Thompson. Can I just ask a clarifying question? You had mentioned um, that in your thinking, the chief technologist and head of enforcement would likely be part of the chief privacy auditor kind of function of the organization. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood what you were kind of um, the, the I, I We don't have that position fully defined yet. Um, my understanding is that that person could sort of encompass those sorts of roles. I don't think that we know exactly yet, um, and that's something we would presumably discuss further in the future. Um, so that that was my that was my thinking. Got it. That's a helpful clarification.
Yes, Mr. Lay. Yeah, um, you know, <clears throat> still, you know, I'm still processing this this uh, this option. I think, you know, I think I can support this if you know we make sure it's just cabin to these two hires. I don't want to have a precedent where, you know, we're we're nitpicking and micromanaging, um, you know, the board. I mean the the agency, and um, we already know it's a lot to the hiring process. And um, yeah, I think I can support. If we we make sure it's just happened to these two hires, and and we don't, as a board, begin to get involved in, in too many of these decisions that I think are best left to the executive director um, and staff. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Your point is very well taken. Yes, Mr. Thompson. I just wanted to offer at the appropriate. I don't want to foreclose any further discussion, but I wanted to offer to you at the appropriate time if this needed a motion that I would be happy to make such a motion. Uh, as I said, I appreciate. Uh, I feel like you you heard the the input and viewpoint, and so just wanted to take the opportunity to support you by making the motion at the appropriate time. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Um, I will pause just in case there are further comments. I appreciate. Everyone's thought, and I very much appreciate across the board everyone's flexibility um, and thinking through how best to support the executive director, you know, allow him to make the decisions um, that are appropriate for the agency, so provide for board input for certain important positions. I really do appreciate this. I know we have had different views on this, and I appreciate people uh, accepting what may not be the perfect approach from their point of view. Um, so that um, we all feel most comfortable. Um, with that, I will ask if there are any um, public comments. There are no public commenters at this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. Um, in that case, um, this can be a pretty pretty straightforward. Um, uh, may I have a motion to direct the chairperson to work with the executive director um, to coordinate properly notice meetings in which the board can provide input on hiring decisions for the general counsel and the deputy director of communication? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Ms. De La Torre? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. There are five yes votes and zero no votes. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. The motion carries with a vote of five to nothing. Um, again, my sincere thanks to the board, and I look forward to um, working with the executive director um, to execute this. Um, and um, I believe that concludes this agenda item. So we can now move to agenda item number eight, which is public comment on items that are not on the agenda. Um, so at this point, um, we will invite public comment on items that are not on the agenda. Um, so uh, members of the public can comment on any um, topic they wish. But before we proceed, please do note that the only action the board can take is to listen to comments and consider whether it will discuss the topic at a future meeting. Um, no other action can be taken on the item at this meeting. Uh, though it may seem at times as though the board is not being responsive, following these guidelines is critical to ensure that the uh, Bag the Keen Open Meeting Act is properly filed and to avoid compromising either the commenter's goals or the board's mission. Um, with that in mind, um, uh, are there any um, public comments uh, that anyone would like to make? Uh, yes, one moment while I um, prepare them. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. Julian Canetti, you've been unmuted. You have three minutes. 
Thank you. Can can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Uh, great. I apologize for the earlier technical uh, difficulties under agenda item five, um, but thank you, Madam Chair and board many members for the opportunity uh, to address you. Julian Canetti, President and CEO of the California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce. California's small businesses recognize that the state has passed privacy rules that put the highest priority in protecting consumers. These forthcoming regulations ensure that our customers can be confident that businesses manage their personal information in a secure and responsible manner. And we support privacy regulation that protects consumers, even if that means additional compliance costs. But regular, regulators must be careful to ensure their rules are reasonable, practical, and, practical, and clear as possible to minimize resource burdens for the community of small and diverse businesses we represent. Today, unfortunately, California's businesses face conflicting obligations related to the rules that enable consumers to opt out of the sale of personal information. Of personal information, As you are aware, under the CCPA, consumers have the right to tell a company not to sell their personal information. And individual companies that sell personal information must provide consumers with an opt out link. The AG's regulations include an additional obligation that incidentally is not found anywhere in the CCPA itself that businesses must recognize universal web browser or device opt out signals, which are to operate across all apps or websites consumers may visit. Meanwhile, under the under the C CPRA, which will take effect, of course, in 2023, the global opt out is not mandatory. Businesses can either provide an opt out link to their pages or recognize a global opt out signal in a browser. There are also important differences in how the global opt out mechanism is to work in practice. For example, under the CCPA, the global opt out may be set by the browser or device maker by default. Under the CPRA, affirmative user choice is required. How should California's small and diverse businesses manage these conflicting frameworks? Should they spend the money and time to comply with the current global opt out framework only to have the landscape change when CPRA goes into effect in three years. We urge the California Privacy Protection Agency and the Attorney General's Office to work with each other to review and, and resolve some of these conflicting provisions that avert any unintended and unnecessary administrative burden and costs for our small and diverse business communities. Perhaps regulators could give companies the option of whether to honor a universal opt-out browser, making the global opt-out option but requiring the do not sell link under the CCPA will benefit consumers by creating an opt out standard that is consistent with both CCPA and CPRA as written, and that won't change in two years. We respectfully request that CPPA take reasonable and balanced approach in developing these uh, privacy Mr. regulations. Mr. Kennedy, you. your, your three minutes are, are up. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy, and thank you for your patience with the technical glitch and for coming back and, and offering your comment later. Are there further public comments, Ms. Hurtado? Uh, yes. Wendy Rogers, I'm sorry, Wendy Reynolds, you have three minutes. You've been unmuted. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes, please continue. Um, my question relates to, and I know you probably can't answer necessarily, but has an informational hearing been calendared? And if so, has there been subject matter identified? There was a comment made by a board member in the first agenda item that led us to believe you have calendared something and we just don't know what it is. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. I, I can say that all um, things about the regulation process are on our website. And thank you for the comment and the question. At this time, there are no additional commenters. Thank you very much to uh, Mr. Kennedy and Ms. Reynolds. And um, with that, we will move to um, agenda item number nine, future agenda items. This is the board's opportunity and the public as well, if they would like to comment. 
uh, to discuss potential items for future agendas. Um, I have um, a few items that I've collected, um, obviously focusing on uh, rulemaking substance as subcommittees are ready for that. Um, I also um, have in mind Ms. De La Torre's suggestion of organizing um, meeting time between administration and substance. Um, we uh, still have the potential for doing trainings or tutorials. Um, in our last board meeting, for example, we talked about expert presentations, which may be part of informational hearings. Um, we could also imagine having those um, on the agenda for board meetings. Um, uh, um, uh, potential discussion of board operations and policies. Um, obviously, we've just discussed input from the board on um, some hiring for a couple of positions. Um, and there's also the potential um, for presentations on um, some of the things that were discussed today under the rulemaking process subcommittee, um, for example, um, board role um, and organization. Uh, so I have a, a list of things um, and um, now would like to ask if board members have any additional items. All right. Um, uh, is there any public comment? There are no commenters at this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. Um, with that, um, we uh, move to the final agenda item, which is adjournment. Um, I would like to most sincerely thank um, board members for their work on this meeting and their work in the meeting, um, to the staff who put this meeting together um, and um, uh, hosted it for us and helped with um, technical issues as they arose, and to members of the public for their attention to our work and their contributions to our meeting today. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. May I have a second? A second. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. I have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. Ms. Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Ms. De La Torre? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. There are five yes votes and zero no votes. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. The motion has been approved by a vote of five to zero, and this meeting of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board is hereby adjourned. Thank you all.